1986, Laura Schroff was walking to work in New York. She passed an 11-year-old boy named Maurice who said he was hungry, and he asked her for some money to buy food. Well, Laura just kept walking. But then she stopped, walked back to Maurice, and she offered to take him to McDonald's for a burger. They talked. Maurice's mom was on drugs, his dad in a street gang. Laura knew that he needed more than just a meal that afternoon. And for the next four years, Laura and Maurice met every Monday for lunch. And today, after 26 years, they consider each other family. Their story is told in a remarkable new book called The Invisible Thread. Would you please welcome Laura Schroff and Maurice Mazak. Thank you so much for being here, Laura and Maurice. This is one of the most touching and refreshing and inspiring stories that I have read in a long time. The book is fantastic. And, and I thought, if you made this up, I wouldn't have believed it. But it's a true story. You walk by this kid just a few blocks from our studio here in New York. And he says, I'd like some change. I'm hungry. And you walk on by. You turned around. Why? Why did you turn around? I turned around because what resonated with me were the words, I'm hungry. Mm. I'd never seen an 11-year-old panhandler before. And so I just couldn't believe he said those words. So I went back and I said to him, you know what, we'll go to McDonald's. But you know, it's interesting. I think that our lives take us in directions and sometimes there are no accidents. You know, when I was 25 years old, my mother died when she was 47. Mm at a very young age, she was my rock. And what comforted me throughout my entire adult life was the fact that she was this angel that overlooked me and watched, for, watched over me. And I absolutely believe that she knew that I needed something more in my life. And she knew that Maurice needed someone to care for him. And she brought us together. You know, I, I, it's an amazing thing because you're talking about it from the standpoint of what Maurice did for you, even though most of us would in reading the story say, wow, Laura, what you did for Maurice. Had, had she just given you a couple of bucks and said, here, kid, go get something to eat, things would have been different, wouldn't they? Definitely. If she had just given me a couple of bucks and said, here, kid, go get something to eat, my whole life would be different. Uh, I grew up with a bunch of drug addicts and drug dealers. I lived two blocks away from her, and my whole environment was drug violence, drugs violence, and chaos. And that's all I knew, but when I met Laura, my whole life changed, and it changed for the better. D did you have a hard time thinking, this lady is actually going to take me to eat, and she's going to walk in Central Park with me, and she's going to take me to a place and buy me my, the first steak I've ever had in my life? I mean, w what were you thinking as an 11-year-old boy in, in the same sweatpants that, you know, you wore all the time, because it's all you had? I thought, I thought that she was a godsend. I thought that you know, someone was looking over me to send me an angel. And that's what I believe. I believe the Lord sent me an angel when he sent me, Laura. No question. I mean, I think, you know, as I read the story, and it's just so compelling, Laura, did you expect this to turn into a 26-year relationship? And at what point did you realize this is not just me taking a kid out to lunch? Well, you know, you never could imagine that when we met that day that... Maurice would not only change my life, but I would change his life, and that ultimately there would be such an incredible ripple effect to the point where his children today will never know from drugs and violence. Never could have imagined it. Now, Maurice, you're now married. You've got how many children? I have seven children. Seven children, ranging from six to 21 years old. You have your own uh, contracting business. Yes, I have a small co subcontracting business. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty well as far as life is concerned. I, I just believe that love and happiness is, is, is the most pleasure you can get out of life. And, and that's what I have. I remember when Laura took me to her sister's house. And this is the point that my life had changed. You know... Laura always asked me what was the greatest thing about her sister's house. Well, her sister had a lawn, and she had a backyard, basement, everything was in it, all types of toys and things. We went bike riding. But the one thing that stood out to me was the table 
that her sister had. Her sister had a long table, and we sat down and we ate, and they shared love across that table with their family. You'd never seen that before, had you? I'd, I'd never seen that before. Had you ever had a meal with your family, your own parents? No, not on the table. Never. And, 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 the, and, the, and the beauty about that is, from that point on, that was the first time I had ever dreamed about doing anything in life. And today, I have a small apartment in Manhattan, and I don't have a living room. I have a dining room with a long table. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, with seven kids, you need a long table, Maurice. There's a great story out of the book that was very touching. And, and Laura, you asked if you could uh, help him have lunch at school because, you know, that was something. It was the only meal you really got. But you wanted to have a lunch in a brown bag. Explain why that mattered to you that it came in a brown bag. Well, the reason why I believe that it came in a brown bag and it mattered to me is when I went to school, I'd often go to school and I see all the kids come in with their lunch in their brown paper bag and and for me that I knew someone cared about them and I knew someone loved them. They put that time they put time in to give them their lunch in a brown paper bag. And so Laura asked me uh, one day that she said, I would give you money or I can make you lunch. And I told her, listen, I, I really don't want your money, but if you can put my lunch in a brown paper bag, it will make the world a difference for me because someone know, <laughs> would know, the kids would know when I come to school that someone cared about me. Laura, what did and that say to you when he said that? It actually took my breath away. Yeah, does mine hear yeah, about it? It, it? it took my breath away, but... Here I was, and this 11-year-old kid was teaching me things. He taught me the definition of lunch in a brown paper bag. The bag is only brown paper, but what you put into it is something we all call love. And he knew that he wanted lunch in a brown paper bag over money. That, that is just... It, it, it is one of the most touching stories in the book. The book is called An Invisible Thread. Where did the, where did the title come from? <laughs> You know, it's, it's an incredible story. I love this story because about a month before my co-author and I, Alex Trezanowski, who's here today as well, um, we couldn't come up with a name. Every name mm. I came up with, he didn't like, and every name I came up with, he didn't. And I had to go to Duane Reed to buy a birthday card. I was rushing, and I used to like to go to my local b card store. Uh -huh. And the next thing I knew, I'd never bought a card in Duane Reed. I'm looking at this card, and it said... There's an old saying about an invisible thread that connects those that are destined to meet. And I opened up the card and it said, I'm so happy you're in my life and happy birthday. And I thought, oh my God, that is exactly the relationship that Maurice and I have. It's an invisible thread. I ran upstairs, I called Alex, I said, oh my God, I said, I've got the name. It's an invisible thread. And what's so interesting is I've received so many emails from so many people saying, I have this really special relationship with this person, but I've never known the definition of it. And basically what you've done with your book is define my relationship. We were meant to be in, in, our, in each other's lives. It wasn't an invisible thread that connected us. Yeah, it's... Speaking of birthdays, at one of your birthdays, oh. Maurice was there to offer a toast. It is very special. We have a little tape of it. Let's watch. At that moment, she saved my life because I was going down the wrong road, the wrong hill. You know, my mother, bless her soul, my mother died. And, and, and my mother was on drugs at the time. And the Lord sent me an angel. And my angel is Lori, and, I, and I'm so glad that I'm at your 50th birthday. Oh, I what mean... Is that oh. the best toast ever? That is the best toast ever. And do you know that when he came to the party, I said to him, oh, by the way, I said, very few people are going to make toast. I said, but I would love for you to make a toast. And like an hour later, he made that toast. Well, it was absolutely fantastic. You ought to be the head of the Toastmasters. You were so good <laughs> at it, Maurice. By the way, a couple of things I want to mention. First of all, all our audience members are going to get a copy yes. of the book, An Invisible Thread. And they're going to love it. And if you have not yet read it, let me assure you that it is a book worth getting at Amazon or bookstores. It, you need something to inspire you and make you feel good again. And I promise you, this book will uh, just make you want to stand up and do something nice for people. 
which is part of what you're trying to do. And there's a project you're involved in. I want you to very quickly share with us the Share Our Strength, No Kid Hungry. Part of the profits from this book will go to that project. Talk yes. about it. And I have to say that I am so excited about this partnership. And I feel enormously blessed that we're able to give back to an organization that has for over 25 years been trying to end childhood hunger. You know, this organization was started by Billy Shore and his sister Debbie 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And what they do every day is try to supply food for children at school as well as during the summer. And I feel so blessed, we both feel so blessed that we're at a place in our lives now that we can continue to give back because, you know, what we talk about in the book all the time is how one simple gesture can make an enormous difference. How one act of kindness can change a person's life. Laura Maurice, thank you. God bless you for being here. What a wonderful and needed story for all of us uh, to have here today on this Come new here. year. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. God bless you. Maurice, thank you.